Attention all you rule breakers, you misfits and troublemakers, all you free spirits and pioneers, all you visionaries and nonconformists. Everything the establishment has told you is wrong with you is actually what's right with you. You see things others don't. You are hardwired to change the world. You are listening to the Spiritual Activist Radio Show, and I am Rahasia Uncensored where we look at the world not as it is, but as we know it can be, if and only if we have the courage to question the answers we've been given. This is our world, and it's time for us to take it back. So, welcome to the BBS podcast again. And I think you've noticed that I'm only doing this about, oh, once every two weeks. Because here's the thing, I'm getting so tired of talking uh, to the choir. I mean, it really doesn't accomplish a whole lot. And to talk to the other people requires so much preparation and dismantling of their indoctrination that I I get frustrated with that. but today I'm here and I'm going, what I'm going to do today is I published a magazine called The Lotus Guide, probably heard about it here in Northern California. And we've always been uh, pretty much our audience is the alternative health audience, alternative living. Uh, we've done issues on everything from UFOs and chemtrails to Michael Reynolds, Earthships, uh, Bruce Lipton, um, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden. Uh, we, it's a pretty interesting magazine all these years, which has been about 17 years now. Uh, but I find here lately that it's becoming more difficult to talk about things. Um, and some people tell me, you know, you shouldn't talk about it. I've had YouTube taken down. Uh, I've given up on Facebook. You, you can't say anything there uh, unless it's totally against Trump. If it's totally against Trump, even if it's bullshit, it it stays up. Uh, Go figure that one out. Um, But here we are today. And I can't seem to be quiet. Because I tell you, when when this house of cards falls, which it will, you know, a friend of mine in Sweden told me, he said, you know what, I hate to say this, and it sounds really bad, but you guys are going to get what you deserve. And it, it sort of hit, hit me right in my chest, like, wow. You know, and that means it's true. We're going to get what we deserve. Um, so if we want more, we need to deserve more. And for that, you have to work and be responsible. And I think part of responsibility is telling the truth. And if telling the truth gets me censored, shut down, canceled, you know, at this point, I, I would rather be in that group of people and get canceled for telling the truth than make lots of money, get lots of views and everything else for spreading the lies and deceit and indoctrination that I see going on really strong. I, I watch CNN and MSNBC. I watch them all. I also watch Glenn Beck, Newsmax, uh, American One News. I, I watch both sides. And I have to tell you, um, trying to keep politics out of this, which, which is hard to do because politics won't keep us out of it. But when I really look at this and really look at both sides and you check what is being said, I, I'm telling you, CNN is really is a fake news channel. And I know that might get this all Uh, canceled. And I'm going to try to remember not to use certain words, um, you know, because the algorithms and all that. It's too bad to to this point, because we're we're not living in the land of free speech anymore. What I like to do is I wrote an article for the next issue, which I even mentioned the article, it it might be my last article, for all I know, it's it's according to how the world goes. but I'm not going to pick a winning side. I'm going to pick the side of truth. And wherever the truth takes me, that's where I'm going to go, no matter what. That's where I'm going to go. 
And um, I think we all need to use that as our guide stone. So I'm going to start reading my article that I wrote and um, probably do some commentaries here and there. But this is called, I, I named it pretty provocative, but it's really true. Toxic tribalism and the manufacturing of the madness in crowds. Um, there's been a, a couple of books written, one recently about the madness in crowds. And it's all based around, we do things as a group that we would never do as individuals. That's the reason we have lynch mobs and not a lynch person. Uh, most of the people in a lynch mob would never lynch the person if, if they were by themselves. And usually all it takes is one sheriff sitting on the steps with a shotgun, uh, threatening to blow the, the leader away, and pretty much the mob will disperse because their bravery exists only with no confrontation. That's what we have to do. We have to confront the madness in crowds and it's toxic tribalism and the manufacturing of the madness in crowds because tribalism seems to be one of the base problems right now. We're, we're going backwards in time. I, I see reverse racism happening all the time. And uh, it's too bad in a way that I'm not a black person talking about this because it would hold a little bit of credibility. But, you know, we have people like Candace Owens and a numerous other black people speaking up and saying, look, this is not the way to go. We, we've set back our race relations decades in the past year. And uh, let's face it, the, the organizations, I, I hesitate even saying the organization because they seem to have control. Uh, but we know the organization I'm talking about because they, they have a group of people and they say that that group of people matters and sort of discounts everybody else. Uh, black farmers are getting subsidies. White farmers aren't. They're at the back of the line. Um, the mayor of Chicago, she will only accept interviews with black uh, reporters. But what if, what if uh, anybody would say in a, in a political position would say, I'll accept interviews, but only from white reporters. There would be so many lawsuits, but there's nothing. And this is what I mean. If you really look at what's going on with a critical thinking, which it seems to not happen too much right now, but with some critical thinking, you, you can see if, if you see two people up on the stage and these two people have conflicting stories about what, they, what their perspective is of the world. Now, this side, side A, is saying one thing. One thing. And this side, side B, is saying the exact opposite. And you say, okay, how am I going to find out the truth? You ask side A, okay, show me the evidence. Let, let me research and let's investigate this. And they say, sure, let's, let's do that. Then you ask side B, uh, let's investigate and let's look at your side. And they cut you off. They, they cut your mic off, they suppress you, they go out on social media, anything you're saying about investigating them, they shut it down and they will not investigate. Like the, um, dare I say it, the, the elections. What's wrong with investigating? And when I see the, both sides of the story, uh, they definitely don't add up. Uh, just a few years ago, I think in 2016 or 17, CNN did a whole huge show on how corrupt the voting system is. It is just corrupt beyond repair almost. They did a whole thing in investigating everything. Of course, Trump just won, you know. But now they're saying that it's absolutely bulletproof. There, there is no way that there can be anything wrong with the voting, the voting machines, the, everything, the ballots, everything. But we can't investigate it. And that makes me suspicious, no matter who I'm for, you know, no matter who I'm for. 
but I'm regressing a little bit here, but uh, I'm gonna start reading the article now. Toxic tribalism and the manufacturing of the madness of crowds by me. Before I get started, I must ask you, please do not be offended because of what I'm about to write or how I need to go about it. Let me start by saying how I feel, which I'm sure many of you can resonate with. I sometimes feel like I'm a person with vision in one eye, which has obvious limitations like depth perception, three-dimensional vision, so forth. However, as I walk through the valley of the blind, I can see the advantages of having vision if only in one eye. The problem arises when I try to speak of things like color or rainbows. I suppose another allegory would be Plato's cave. Coming back into the cave, I now find myself an outsider and even some of my closest friends who can only see the shadow of what I'm talking about. Some of the things I will be writing about here in this article are beyond a shadow of a doubt true. These are things that I've really looked about, looked at and checked out. And um, I'm not just writing off the top of my head I'm, because believe me, if I say one little teeny, teeny thing wrong, I, I am attacked by the, the trolls, the couch potatoes, the, the millennials sitting around in their parents' basement and the list goes on. And um, so I'm really cautious. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying I have special vision or an in-depth knowledge of the world we live in. If I don't say something like that, I have to be careful because people say, oh, you're judging us, you're holier than... It's amazing writing an article in today's world. Uh, if you're not in the public eye, it, you, you might not know what I mean, except maybe talking with your neighbor. And um, that can be sort of crazy too. I'm simply saying that any of us can remove the blinders and walk outside into the light of day and see that there's another dimension of perception awaiting us. But herein lies the problem, our ego personalities that have become attached and identified with living in the valley of the blind and seeing only our shadows on the cave wall. That it, it's just impossible for that to be part of the real reality. They're just shadows. This means that most of us who think we are, we cannot continue on our journey of awakening. This is far too deep for us to go into this article right now. But we should give it some thought. What I'm talking about here is we tend to identify not only with the world around us. We're egocentric. We truly see the world as revolving around us. So that gives us a, a little bit of a false perception that the world actually does revolve around us. It doesn't. That's a perception. But in that egocentric thinking, we build up a personality, a, a way of seeing the world in, as it relates to us <clears throat> and how we relate to them. And in that identification, we build up an ego personality construct. And here's the problem. Even when you say, I, I want to awake, I want to be illuminated, enlightened, the I that's saying that can never be there. there it takes a lot of work to get past that ego construct. And um, that can take a lifetime or many lifetimes. So we have to get to a point to where we can even start dismantling our ego constructs to understand some of the things I'm talking about in this article, which is unfortunate because there, there's a, a general audience out there in Northern California that probably won't get what I'm talking about. But what I'm trying to get to are the people that's sitting on the fence. Because for, forget about the choir, they, they're, they have their own momentum and they're going down this road of looking for the truth. And forget about the morons that are going over the, the edge with all the other sheeple. 
because they don't realize that it's not that they're getting close to the edge. They're over the edge. They're in free fall. And the best that they can do at this point, truthfully, is try to figure out where they're going to land and try to land on something where they can survive um, or fly, you know, and, and that's probably not going to happen. So back to the article. Emails regarding where we get, we, hey, hang on there. Uh, uh, uh. I, it may help to give you a couple of examples I've experienced lately. I recently said something in one of my community emails regarding where we get our facts. Without even saying where I stood on any issue, no politics, I said we might do well to stop getting our health information from politicians and corporate news media that at this point are little more than propaganda and entertainment channels. Well, that really, really seemed to um, poke the CNN watchers, um, which <laughs> there aren't that many anymore. I only received uh, two rebuttals to that. One was so ridiculous, I, I, I couldn't even understand it. You know, and I, I let several friends read it. What the hell is he talking about? It didn't make any sense at all. The other one, it was a rebuttal, but the rebuttal consisted of sending me a lot of information on COVID-19 from researchers and scientists. And that's exactly what I was talking about in the community email is get your information from reliable sources. And I emailed him back. I said, you know, you're actually agreeing with me here and you're, but you're sending this to me like a rebuttal. Then he thought about it and he emailed me back. He says, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. This is what I'm talking about. We get so polarized that sometimes we can't even understand what somebody is trying to say. Okay, on with the article. Well, I received emails back from people on my list saying that they have, they meaning the news media, they have our best interest at heart and only report the facts which are basically the shadows on the wall. One person, a close friend of mine, da, 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 I already told you that. This is what I mean about people being so polarized that it's difficult to communicate with them. And when you do, it, it's like you want to clap your hands and go, hey, snap out of it. Okay, there are many other subjects that I no longer feel free to discuss anymore because of the amount of polarized and disinformed and misinformed people in our community. I'm not naive. I know this sounds a bit patronizing. And the last thing I would wanna do is for you to feel like I'm talking down to you. But I honestly feel like some of this needs to be said. And if this ends up being the last article I write, it would be a small price to pay if it gets one person to open their eyes and walk outside the cave. Fortunately, I have many friends whom I can openly converse with. And yes, we can disagree without accusing each other of being a conspirator, a racist, or an insurgent, or worse. We can talk, disagree, and find common ground knowing that all disagreements are based around our backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in life all of which have to do have very little to do with the facts and ultimate truths, which is what we're actually seeking. This is called perceptual differences. Anybody that is a debater, professional debater, uh, like lawyers and politicians uh, knows about this and they, they can use that because they come in behind your perception and start dismantling it. On with the article. It seems to me that we've reached a point in our society when we need to take a couple of steps back and understand the importance of dialectic communication as talked about with philosophers like Hegel. If we all lose the ability to sit down with someone and have an honest debate, look at the other side and find common ground <clears throat> to build on, we are doomed as a society. And I truly mean that. I mean, the other day, uh, Eric, Eric Clapton took the B 
And uh, he said it was the worst experience he's ever had. He thought he would never play guitar again. He said, he, I wished he had not even got close to that needle. And he was one of the proponents of this, you know, but he, he's basically telling you, hey, think about this because some people are having adverse reactions that are, are serious, you know, but you don't get that on the news. Um, actually, the only good source of the dangers of the is if you go to the CDC website and really drill down and, and they'll tell you, uh, be careful. Okay, I've learned the hard way what Bruce Lipton was talking about in our interview, which was in this recent issue that's coming out of the Lotus Guide. And the fact that you cannot and should not try to force someone to open their eyes and walk outside in the sunlight and see that they have formed their perception of reality based on the shadows on the cave wall. It simply doesn't work. And I tell you, begrudgingly, I have to admit that that's true. I, I mean, if I see somebody that I, I really understand that they're blind and they're walking towards a cliff, it's hard, very difficult not to say something, even if they call you names in the process. Um, I mean, I, I, I see people heading towards the cliff right now. Uh, and I, I constantly doing introspection to make sure I'm not one of those people because we're being indoctrinated by propagandists and people that really have this down. I mean, we actually think we have a president right now that makes decisions and he can't even talk. And, and people still, uh, although it's changing a little bit, I mean, you can only push insanity so far. Back to the article. I've come to the point where I'm realizing that everyone has to follow their own paths in life and at some point start seeing in their own time that the world around them is based almost entirely on instilling fear into us as a manipulative process to guide us deeper and deeper into the shadow world. How this happens, it's, it's sort of crazy that we actually call it the shadow government too. I just thought of that. How this happens is well documented by sociologists and neuroscientists. If a person can be kept in fear, their frontal lobes, critical thinking is almost entirely blocked. And this is, this is I'm talking about an article I, I read. We'll talk about this too. I read an article by Valerie Strauss in the Washington Post called Critical Condition of Critical Thinking. The article is basically saying that most students would require too much discussion on current events because they lack truthful facts and are slow readers making critical thinking too time consuming. My question is, if we aren't using critical thinking to solve our problems, what are we using? Obviously, my take on this is that they don't want us to use critical thinking in the first place to decipher the world we live in. It's much easier on those in charge to keep us in fear, making it all but impossible to logically come to decisions based on a critical analysis of the problems that we face in today's world. Now, think about that. I, I think about this every time I, I try to talk to somebody with an opposing point of view. There, there is so much... <clears throat> disinformation and misinformation and <clears throat> totally uninformed that it requires a massive amount of education and manipulation in a way because you have to sort of navigate around their defense mechanisms to get them to simply see something that is so simple and so true. I mean, it's beyond my... Uh, it's beyond my cognitive powers sometimes to be able to do that, to be honest with you. Back to the article. Now, here's the situation I find myself in. Everything I just wrote about will never get through to the very people it needs to. As a matter of fact, they probably stop reading this by now. Of course, the people with one eye open and are living outside the cave understand this all too well. But 
how to reach the vast majority of people is the question. And here's the answer. You must be the change you wish to see in the world, Gandhi. In my interview with Bruce Lipton, he puts it another way. In the movie, When Harry Met Sally, there's a part where Meg Ryan is faking an orgasm and the lady at the next table told the waiter, I want what she's having. I'm not a master wordsmith or an enlightened philosopher and I can't find the words to navigate around someone's personal ego constructs based on a world that is collapsing. All I can do on a personal level is live a life worth living, which means a life that is continually being self-examined. Now, one of the things I might throw in here is Bruce Lifton and I, we talked, we, we've talked about uh, the imaginal cell probably too much for people that's heard it before, but it's such a good analogy. And I, I told him in the interview that, you know, you know, Bruce, I one of the analogies that I, I really, really hold on to because it gives me hope is the imaginal cell, caterpillar becoming a butterfly. And the reason I hold on to it is because I told him when I look around in the world today at the people in charge, especially, I mean, I, I, I don't even know how this happens, but maybe it's just, it just happens because shit floats. It, we, what we let rise to the surface with a few exceptions are really shitty people. I mean, I, I would not invite them into my house and have dinner with them. And they're making decisions for my life and my well being that could drastically affect if I continue living on this planet or not. And I, I would not hang out with them. Uh, if I seen them in a restaurant, I might go, uh, I, you know, but I, I wouldn't want to engage with them because they're, they're mentally ill for one. Uh, they tell us things like, hey, we want to take all your guns away while they have armed guards for them. They tell you things like, hey, we want to tear down the wall at the border while they put up a wall around them. Nancy Pelosi has a wall around her house millions and millions of dollars of house too by the way how does she make that much money look up here here's one for you look up nancy pelosi's family history here in california you'll see it goes back generations of mobsters and criminals it's public knowledge you know and um but she sure has her ice cream though but i regress a little bit here Okay, I'm back to the article. I'm assuming that it's the adults in the room that are still reading this. And I would be remiss as a publisher if I didn't at least try to open a few eyes, even at the risk of being attacked, which I will. But fortunately, my magazine usually gets picked up by more awake people and not the woke people. They tip over my stands and put graffiti on it and everything else. Um, I have almost infinite patience with people who pull out the race card because I know they have exhausted their repertoire of attacks that have now failed. I have patience with the people who have told me that reading a Dr. Seuss book to children because it depicts blackbirds as black people or a Chinese person using chopsticks is detrimental to their well-being, while at the same time on primetime television, they can watch the Emmy Awards where Cardi B singing My Wet Ass Pussy, which has something to do with the necessity of having a bucket and a mop and doing something with another woman that would have been pornography just a few years ago. That's no problem at all. I mean, look up Cardi B and My Wet Ass Pussy and read the words to that. It's the most disgusting lyrics I, I think I've ever and she won an Emmy I, I think it might have even been like in the top 10 or 5 or 1 even uh, she tells you where's the mentality of people and it's these same people that saying that our kids will get distorted views of reality by reading a Dr. Seuss book come on god I just, I just get 
really frustrated sometimes. I'm frustrated as hell and I can't take it anymore. I could continue with the insanity of things like our governor locking us down while he's, he eats out with his friends and almost every politician breaking their own rules except in Florida and Texas. I tell you, DeSantos, if I wanted to see a really good ticket in 2024, DeSanto would be on that ticket for president. I won't even get started on the illegal immigrants who are being victimized daily before and after they cross the border. And I have to say, excuse me, they're called undocumented citizens now. Just today, May 1st, one of many homes used in Texas as temporary housing for human traffickers was busted. Over 90 people inside this Houston home. <laughs> and how is it that China can reprimand us and condemn us for human rights issues while they enslave and imprison over a million Uyghurs in their own country? And am I surprised that Russia is now forming an alliance with China after we refuse them when they ask for us to do a reset and to align ourselves with them? No, I'm not surprised, but I am deeply alarmed. Deeply, because they're going to form an alliance with someone. And guess who that someone's going to be? I mean, I, I, I have a lot of respect for our, our law enforcement, our military, because they do things, they go places that you couldn't pay me enough to go there and do anything. We have police officers that goes into black communities, white police officers that go in black communities and, and protect black people. And they get in trouble daily. The, the likelihood of a white officer being shot by a black man is 15 times greater than a black man being shot by a white officer. Why don't we hear about that? Um, you know, and I, I know I'm, I'm going to lose some of you with that, but you know what? I, I don't care anymore. I really don't care. A friend of mine, Terry Cole Whitaker, she wrote a book years ago called, It's None of My Business What You Think About Me. And it really isn't. I, I at this point, I could care less. I, I'm developing uh, I don't know, Teflon or something, because it doesn't stick to me the way it used to. Uh, it's like going into an insane asylum and an insane person coming up to me and screaming in my face, you're crazy. Well, okay, you know, you have your point of view, but uh, I suggest you look around your environment, you know, and that's all I can say to people that come up to me and say, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, okay. Maybe, but look around you. Um, everything that's going on right now is done behind closed doors by more than two people. Uh, that is, by definition, a conspiracy. And it's no theory. You know? I could continue with the insanity going on in our world right now, and it would get us nowhere because people don't or can't see the finer details happening in plain sight. The one thing I absolutely do not have patience with are people who refuse to look into child sex trafficking because it makes them feel uncomfortable. And I say that because I, I, I had an experience with an elderly woman. She was, oh, she was probably my age, to be honest with you. Uh, we were having dinner with a, a group of people here three or four months ago. Uh, illegally coming together as a, as a group and the subject of sex trafficking and children came up and we started talking about it, you know, and this elderly lady that was my age uh, says, excuse me, excuse me. She had a little patent leather purse and, you know, um, said, this makes me too uncomfortable to think about. And everyone just sort of stopped and looked at her. And I looked at her and you know, I thought, oh, okay, am I going to say something to this nice little old lady? So I said, okay, I hear what you're saying. And I respect the fact that this conversation makes you uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable too. But you have to respect the deeper truth of what you're saying. Because right now, right at this very moment, there are 
thousands of children being sexually trafficked, raped, molested, at least hundreds being satanically sacrificed and in worshiping satanic circles that are unbelievable just to get their adrenochrome. If you're saying that your personal emotional comfort is more important than that, and you can live with it, then okay, we'll be quiet. Can you do that? She said, well, no, well, you put it that way. Uh, oh, no, no, you know, it, it is more important than my emotional comfort. So I said, okay, I respect that too. Because you've seen something, a deeper essence of what you're actually saying and coming to grips with it. And that's what we all have to do. I've had to do this. I didn't want to hear about children being sacrificed and trafficked. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to talk about. But I tell you, when you come to grips with the fact that it's happening as we speak, right now, something inside you wakes up. Back to the article. Okay, the one thing I absolutely do not have patience with is da, 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 da. I wrote about a lot of things in past articles like chemtrails. I wrote about chemtrails before people even knew about it. it. When that article came out, it was right on the front page, chemtrails, you know, planes spraying and everything. And uh, I, people stopped me on the street and say, what are chemtrails? And I said, well, um, look up. And they, they would look up and they say, what am I looking at? I said, you're looking at chemtrails. She said, no, no, that, that's contrails. Isn't it? No, no, it's not contrails. Contrails disappear after a short while and they only appear under remarkably uh, limiting uh, atmospheric conditions. <clears throat> And that was the beginning of me realizing that people were being uh, indoctrinated, believe it or not. That, the chemtrail issue sort of woke me up. Uh, I've also written about, are we heading towards totalitarianism? And people said, nah, don't you think you're getting a little bit uh, dramatic here? Well, at the time, maybe it seemed like it, but according to what I've seen, no. And according to what those very people are looking at now, no, we're, we're, we're deep into totalitarianism area of free speech suppression, taking away our guns and not allowing us to meet in groups, you know, which is a, a right that we have in the Bill of Rights. Uh, it's being dismantled. Are UFOs real? Everyone said, uh, UFOs real, they're not real. And some of the people who believe in UFOs say, yeah, they're real. Now look at June 1st, they're probably going to put this off, but the Pentagon is supposed to release all of their UFO information. And if you've been paying attention at all, there's little rumblings that disclosure is coming because it's it's even showing up on CNN, a little blurb, but people like Tucker Carlson and uh, Glenn Beck and all of these alternative news shows and Joe Rogan did a whole special with favor favor was the uh, pilot that seen the UFOs off the San Diego coast years back and took radar pictures it actually flew around for a couple of weeks and they were taking pictures and it would go down into the ocean uh, and there was no crash they're getting ready to tell us something now why why are they going to tell us that? I don't know. Could, could it be what Warner Von Braun said to his secretary that this would be the last little scheme that the uh, deep state would play on us? Uh, an alien, a fake alien invasion to take away all of our rights because we'd be so scared that they're going to wipe out the human race. Oh my God. You know, uh, it might not even be real. You know, it's, it's hard to say why they're coming up with this. Uh, if it is, if it is a, uh, if everyone believes it's a fake alien invasion, I, I've often chuckled to myself wondering, what, what if it's really real? What if there is actually a, 
a malevolent alien force out there attacking our planet, they come down and they stand face to face with us humans and we don't even believe they're real. And they go back to their commander and say, hey, th these people down there are really strange. Th they think we're all fake. We, we can't even get them scared. They just laugh at us and walk away. You know, it'd be sort of a, a weird twist on things. Um, also wrote about freedom of speech and the collapse of our financial system and our environment, all of which are on our doorsteps now. But some of the most important articles were about real people like Tim Ballard of Operation Underground Railroad. And he has a new movie called The Sound of Freedom and it's based around him. Jim, and I can never remember how to pronounce Jim's last name, Kavi, Kaviasel, Kaviasel, he, he played uh, the Christ in The Passion of the Christ. He plays Tim Ballard and is clear about what he went through making the movie and what he saw. He said that the movie could have never been made in Hollywood because they are too involved in trafficking themselves. A few actors like Keanu Reeves are attempting to make people wake people up on this issue. I watched the YouTube of uh, Keanu Reeves talking about he, he went to, uh, I think it was a producer's party, invited there, and he noticed that everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people had little uh, bottles, like baby bottles on their side with blood. And he was asking, what, why did you have blood? They said, oh, it's baby's blood with adrenochrome in it. And <clears throat> he'd never heard about that before. He, later he did. He looked it up and realized. Then the producer, which I, I'm not going to produce, say his name because I found out who it was, uh, took him into his kitchen and opened up his freezer. And there was a, a frozen baby there. This is what I mean. This stuff makes me uncomfortable to talk about, too. But we need to start talking about this. Hollywood is in over their heads with human sacrificing and trafficking and everything else. And guess why the fake news doesn't cover it? They're in over their heads. These people are in over their heads. A lot of politicians. If we knew the truth about what was going on, we'd probably all have to go outside and throw up for about a half an hour and come back in and go, whoa, what in the hell is going on? Back to the article. History will judge us, not on how cool our cell phones are or how some people wear $400 tennis shoes while others have no shoes at all, or even how we divide ourselves according to how much melatonin we have in our skin. We will be judged on how we take care of our elder population and how well we protected and cared for our children. And I mean, look what happened in New York. They, they sent COVID patients to the assisted living place. They, that governor killed, murdered, I think, but let's say he, he at least killed thousands of elderly people that should not have died. I mean, and there's still people that don't see that. That's, that's what I mean. There, there is something really neurologically going on on a level that I don't comprehend. I honestly don't. Back to the article. If we don't learn from history, we are destined to repeat it. So I highly suggest you do some reading and studying ancient civilizations that are now in ruins, I might add. And more recent empires like civilizations like the British Empire, Roman Empire, Greek Empire, and China just before they were invaded by the Mongols and Genghis Khan. <clears throat> they all had a few things in common. Now tell me if this doesn't sound familiar. They diluted their money systems, depleted their middle class, their military expansion drained their coffers and weakened their inner cities. Their borders were left unprotected and their resources were depleted causing trade wars with their neighbors. Sound familiar? In 2020, we printed up over 40% of all the money we've ever printed. Uh, I mean, if this worked, Zimbabwe would be the richest country on the planet. And, and our money, our fiat money system was already in trouble. And, and we're printing up at this point, probably close to 50% of everything we've ever printed. Our middle class has lost its wealth and its voice in government. Our military budget is larger than many other countries combined, and we have over 800. The last time I looked this up, it was 170. That was about 
seven or eight years ago. We have over 800 military bases in over 80 countries. Many of our inner cities are on fire with little or no law enforcement. Our southern border is wide open with many of the immigrants uh, are from known terrorist countries. And we depend on countries like China for many of our supplies like antibiotics and pharmaceuticals and a long list of other just products, you know, and plastic junk too. And let's not forget that much of our farmland is being bought up by foreign countries and globalist billionaires. That should scare you. If nothing else I've, I've told you it should get you to thinking, it should be that. Almost half, it's going to be half soon. Half of our agricultural lands are going to be owned by people like Jeff Bezos, who just bought a $500 million yacht while his employees work in horrendous conditions. Um, and globalists. What if they all of a sudden decide to do what they already are doing and just try to shut everything down? And all of a sudden, now half of our food supply is not going to even be grown. And, and do you know this? Some of the food that's being, um, uh, actually almost all the food that's being shipped in right now is already being bought into the future. Who's it being bought by? And, and why is there such a rush to get food and hoard it by corporations and companies? And There's a reason for that. Point being here is, we are so similar to the countries that have fallen, the empires that have fallen. We're doing everything that they did, except exponentially worse. And, and the people coming across our border, most of them, I, I would suggest, are probably good people. They're just wanting a better life. They believed what they heard. Come to the border. And as Biden said, purge the border and we'll take care of you. Uh, but the trip up here, they're getting raped, molested, and trafficked. And coming across the border, the cartels, if, if our border patrol goes down there and starts trying to stop them, the cartels will get a baby and throw it in the, the river, knowing that they have to save the baby. And when they do, they go the other way and take everybody across. <laughs> the, these are things that are going on. And, and if you don't like listening to it, then push the little stop button and uh, just stop listening. Because if we don't start listening and taking this really, really serious and being responsible, we're going to lose our country, you know? And uh, I never really thought of myself as a patriot or not as a patriot. It just wasn't that big of a thing. But I tell you, when I look back in history and see th the sacrifices that's been made to, for this experiment called America to happen. I, I feel a responsibility to those people, if nothing else. I mean, if I don't even feel a responsibility to my grandkids, my children, and other people's kids and grandkids in the future, forget that even. Just being responsible for the people that have given everything for us to have the freedom to do this right now, while we still have it, it's being taken away. Uh, Okay, back to the article. I would like to leave you with this. Every passing moment has within it the seeds of what we will become tomorrow. I've learned that it's imperative to know what's going on in the world and at the same time, not be attached to it. Be in the world, but not of it. I think that is written in a little black book that a lot of you read. One of the things I learned while living on a sailboat was to navigate without instruments using dead reckoning. This is when you sit down with a map, make a dot where you were, make a dot where you are, and then take a ruler and draw a straight line to see where you're going to end up. When I do that, see where we've been and now where we're at, it no longer takes a genius to see that this will not end well unless we make some serious, well thought out course, adjust course adjustments. I will leave you with some wise words from someone who paid the ultimate price for standing up and trying to warn us about what is now upon us, as did Eisenhower. Listen to the whole Eisenhower 
uh, talk, by the way. Uh, not just a little clip it on YouTube where he talks about the mill industrial, military industrial complex. He goes on to talk about technology uh, eventually taking over our lives too. That we should keep that in mind. This is from John Fitzgerald Kennedy. I, I still remember the, the moment that I heard it on. The, I was uh, in uh, high school uh, lunchtime. I heard it come over the speaker marked a place in time for me. <clears throat> so let us not be blind to our differences, but let us also direct attention to our common interest and to the means by which those differences can be resolved. And if we can't end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future. And we are all mortal. John Kennedy. I end it with, thank you for your time and understanding that much of what I'm writing about here is difficult to put into words. And as Bertrand Russell once said, I would never die for my beliefs because I could be wrong. And let's not forget, don't kill the messenger. Rahasia at USA.com. And I might just add one more thing by Martin Luther King. You know, he, he talked about everything that's going on right now. They would probably cancel him out. You know, he, he wouldn't last 10 minutes. Um, people like Jesse Jackson and all these other people that profit from chaos and mob madness they they're doing fine but um martin luther king said that we should never judge a person by the color of their skin we should always judge them by the content of their character and if we don't get back to that like my friend in sweden said we're going to get what we deserve and at this point unless i see more people waking up um I'm, I'm making sure that I'm going to stay safe as safe can be. Uh, I'm not taking the V because there's just too much out there telling me that this is something we have to look into, uh, especially when it has a patent in one of them called 2020-060606. I mean, are they throwing that in our face or what? Um, and there's something uh, questionable but this will probably get taken down from YouTube unless, unless I can, I'll be careful in the description, but um, there's something about genetically altering my DNA uh, and, and being part of an experiment. Although I, I suggest it's not an experiment. I think they know exactly what they're doing, but that gets into a, a, a really conflictive conspiracy theory at this point, but it's a theory based upon a lot of uh, facts. And um, I think time will tell. And I guess I, I'll just uh, leave you with this because if I keep talking like this, I, I know what's gonna happen if things continue on, they're gonna cancel me out. Uh, fortunately, I don't have that big of an audience. I, I never thought I'd be happy that I don't have a huge audience. Um, I mean, I have maybe 10,000 people here in the whole of Northern California that read my magazine, uh, four or 5,000 online that read the flip magazine, uh, 9,000 people on my community email, but th these numbers sound like big, but they're not, uh, I mean, people like Joe Rogan, he has millions of followers. And, and so he has to be really careful of what he says, every little word is analyzed by these millennial couch potatoes and uh, cancel culture trolls. And, and, and they're gonna watch this too. And I, but I leave my comments up because usually they expose their own insanity. So it's getting time to the end of the show. And if you want to support this show, I did put up a uh, GoFundMe for our magazine. I'll leave that link in the description, but you can go to um, 
lotusguide.com forward slash campfire. And I have some links there if you want to make a donation. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I don't monetize my stuff on YouTube. And I probably should, but I don't because then I, I'm going to be put under the microscope even more. And I think it's more important to get the truth out than for me to make a few bucks right now. Uh, but if you want to support me, that's that's great too, but only if you can really afford it and don't give any more than what you could afford. And there's some other really important GoFundMe sites out there too. Look those up too. There's little black kids being killed in these inner cities in Chicago and Minneapolis by gangs. And uh, it's because they defunded the police. The police are afraid to go into these communities right now because if you end up having to shoot uh, an armed criminal, they could go to jail. Um, a lot of things happening right now. Uh, and a lot of people need help. And um, don't worry about me though, because I've seen this coming for at least five or six years and started preparing ahead of time. I'm not a full-on prepper, but, you know, I can survive. And I'm going to live the kind of a life where people look at it and go, I want what he has. Thanks for listening. <laughs>